and welcome to another Mark Bishop show. Uh, particularly this uh, this time, we're going to do something a little different. I've got a new segment where um, I want to preview books because I think with this COVID nineteen things, a lot of people stuck indoors, and we enjoy reading. So, welcome to the reading corner. Let me ask you this: How does the past affect the present? How do the decisions our ancestors made centuries ago affect our lives now? So what is our reason to be? Well, these are all questions Dubu author Norman McCombs asks in his gripping historical novel, A Reason to Be, a poignant tale of loss, hope, and the transcendent power of the love that binds us to one another. I welcome the author of A Reason to Be, Norman McCombs. Hi, thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Norman, allow me, if you will, to give a, a little small synopsis here before we get into the heart of it. You tell the semi-autobiographical story of Douglas McCombs, eh? an accomplished engineer and recent widower who uh, is driven to discover the truth of who he is by studying the people and places he comes from. And after losing his wife to the battle with Alzheimer's, Douglas is left devastated until a chance encounter with a sharp, compassionate librarian by the name of Susie Hamilton. This is on the steps of the New York Public Library, and she shakes him from the throes of grief. And with Susie's help, Douglas takes up genealogy, begins an investigation into his Scottish lineage that takes the reader on a sprawling journey through time. As he traces his ancestry through generations, Douglas manages to discover not only the roots he was searching for, but also a brand new reason to be. Right? So here's a bit of an accolade, uh, folks. Rachel Song, author of Five Stars. A Reason to Be is a brilliant, a cerebral narrative of a man's journey to discover who he is within the stunning breadth of history. What, what do you say to that, Norman? Sounds good. Well, just as a sidebar, you have over 200 patents worldwide, primarily for air separation technology used for a myriad of oxygen applications around the world. Uh, so you're an inventor by trade. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. I'm an engineer slash physical chemist. And yeah, I've got involved in air separation means for oxygen delivery. But for, actually for the last 60 years. So. Hmm. Well, in 2011, you uh, stood outside the East Wing of the White House and before receiving the National Medal, folks, of technology, this is from President Obama when he was in, I believe you asked yourself a very simple question. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, who am I? You know, where did I come from? Um, it was a profound moment for me, and I was used to primarily looking, uh, looking ahead. I didn't spend much time thinking about where I came from, or, and I decided to make note of that particular instance. And and at that moment, I really, at, by the way, all, at, at that time, my wife was in the middle of a battle with Alzheimer's. So it was a very a bittersweet mm -hmm. situation. I was very proud of it, but uh, Grace was there with me being taken care of with some others, but by some others. But it, re retrospectively, I'm getting to enjoy the moment more. Uh, Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you, you met your late wife, Grace, uh, in Amherst, New York, where you were born, and uh, her passing through Alzheimer's led you into a, a deep depression until a close friend aided you into receiving some help. You recovered. Good job. Left Western New York and began to write A Reason to Be. One more review before we get into it. A Reason to Be. Pardon me? I said one more review before we get into it here. This is from John J. Kelly of Detroit Free Press, five stars. A Reason to Be is an exhilarating exploration into exactly why we are here and the never-ending journey to find and to give love. It's not a bad assessment, do you think? No, when I started to write it, it I had written a lot when I was young, but then went off into science and engineering, and I always intended to get, to get back to it, and... Uh, as you mentioned, I, you know, I went into depression, and one of the a very good friend of mine encouraged me to go back to writing for therapeutic reasons. And uh, as I got it, I decided to 
make it sort of a, a three-pronged presentation. One is to maybe inspire others to see that one can come out of that. That's right. Out of depression and uh, along the way, find out a bit about myself, maybe find myself, to get some strength from that by looking into my genealogy. And mm -hmm. also I am very sensitive to the word love. And uh, it's thrown around very cavalierly. Mm -hmm. Love you, love you, and you know that people are uh, <laughs> are just, just use it in a, in such a way as it has no meaning. Well, true love, deep love, is something that uh, I can I consider a form of energy. It never goes away. It's sort of an engineer's perspective, mm -hmm. thermodynamically, but it it, does, it, it is. Um, so I go, I delve into the meaning of love as well. So it's sort of an inspiration, uh, history, and, ro and romance. So uh, a reason to be is semi autobiographical, uh, autobiographical, a graphical. <laughs> I got trapped this morning. Very good. How much of it is uh, is truth though, and how much of it is fiction? Um, it's one hundred percent nonfiction. It's the the as far as emotions are concerned, mm -hmm. emotionally, it's me. Um, mm -hmm. I, the dialogue is invented, so that's fiction. Um, seven, about three quarters of the actual events uh, is nonfiction. My ancestors are all real. Uh, very little of it I had to I have to patch in, obviously, to you know invent the dialogue. Mm -hmm. But it, it Mark, it just evolved. Uh, okay. It, and it uh, formed a life of its own, and uh, it just came out, and it was very therapeutic for me. I did make connection with some mm -hmm. of my old Scottish relatives from centuries ago. There you uh, go. It, it <laughs> built sort of a foundation for my life in, in a way. And, uh, I had never done any genealogy before, uh, but I found that, uh, again, therapeutic in a way. Autobiographical, that's what I was looking for. What I call it autobiographical. I'm I'm Douglas. I, I, I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. Many people ask me why didn't I just use my first name? Well, like I, I couldn't. Uh, right, it didn't flow that way. Yeah. I had to. I had to step back from it. I try to explain that I have a family tree in the front of the book. I, yes, I saw that. Mm. From my name down, it's all all real. So, what prompted you to research your ancestry? Probably 15 to 20 years ago, I had was looking up some patents under my name and just Googling it, and I saw a uh, adjacent website where someone was uh, referring to the descendants of uh, Timothy McCombs, and I had never heard of him. My father had immigrated uh, to the States in uh, 1917, mm -hmm. and he used to talk about his Scottish roots. Uh, but I didn't know he was estranged from his family. But to Timothy was a revelation to me. It was, this fellow had gotten a, a gentleman named Murray McCombs in Toronto, had uh, received a PhD uh, researching the McCombs family. And so I looked, opened it, looked it up, and here I was at the end of the line. And, right. And I looked back at that, and that prompted it. Unfortunately, Murray had died, and so I couldn't speak to him directly. I was born in Buffalo, so I'm not very far from Toronto. I was hoping to be able to meet him, but mm -hmm. it, it, he was gone. But with the help of others, I met some distant relatives and Ancestry.com and other sources, and I started finding some interesting relatives back there, mm. and it, it kept me... Uh, it got me interested in, in that. So it blends in with the title. So a reason to be, you know, you know why are we? I think every, all of us ask that question all the time. Mm -hmm. At least I, you know, why are we here? You know, I think when you get up in the morning, you have to have a reason to be. A there you go. Exist, yeah, a lot of people for, say that to themselves, that's for sure. I get a lot of questions to get through here, so I want to move on. What part, ahead, of, what part of your ancestry shocked you the most? Well, in the beginning, the, you know, the clan structure, I didn't really, I didn't know anything about it. And I didn't, it's fascinating the, the way the clans, they choose their leaders based on their, uh, their ability, hmm. not by their lineage. 
you know, by their courage or leadership capabilities. And so in the old days, if you were the, mm-hmm. the laird of the clan, you, you won't, you uh, earned it. You didn't get it because you inherited it. Right. And I, I didn't, I didn't realize that, but you know, obviously that changed over the years, but originally that was the case. Hmm. And the, and the laird of the clan owned everything, including the children and wow. wife <laughs> and all the land. And that's where it, the clan Thomas started. And that's where the, the name McCombs come my home in Gaelic. And, all right. uh, so that was, and as I moved along, I found some interesting characters. What about uh, the most pride? What what part of your ancestry gave you the most pride? Do you think? Um, the most pride, I would say, when I when I got to the point, Alexander uh, McCombs, who was uh, the son of uh, John Gordon McCombs, who came over from Belfast uh, in 1735 or thereabouts, and he brought his sons Timothy and. Alexander with him, and my uh, my grandfather and my grand uncle, and Alexander was uh, quite accomplished. He was when they came to John Gordon came to this country. They they moved out west for a while, and they, he made some money in the fur trade. He stayed there, and Alexander and and his brother Timothy came back to the coast. And this this was. 1760 or so, mm-hmm. you know, so, so we were landed immigrants, the family were landed immigrants pre-revolution. And I, I had thought that my father's family had come over almost directly, but they had a circuitous route. Oh, and he, uh, he became friends with Alexander, became friends with Alexander Hamilton. And, and they, they brought up at one point, they jointly owned about 25% of New York state. Good Lord. Yeah. And he, uh, he and Alexander Hamilton, however, were got spanked for a land grab, and my relative wound up in debtor's prison because he couldn't pay the money back. And uh, Alexander Hamilton got away with it. Eventually, they got got him got him out of prison, and to and then he was he was a, a prime instrument in the formation of New York Stock Exchange. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a place called the McCombs Mansion on, uh, near Battery Park, right in the shadow of the New York Stock Exchange. Right. It's not there anymore, but there's a big bar relief of the building, McCombs Mansion. God, you it found was used. It. This yeah, research it was used. is amazing, isn't it? I mean, what, what do you have any tips for anyone who wants to start researching their own ancestry? Would you know? Is there anything you can offer? I think it varies from person to person, but Ancestry.com is a great place to start. They, then they they lead you down many different paths, mm-hmm. and if you have any you know older living relatives, it's a great source. To get them to talk about it and open up avenues you never knew existed. I didn't have any such connections, right? right. But, but ancestry.com, you get start looking. It's mm-hmm. a bit of work, Mark, but. Well, it is. I've just started it myself. And in fact, I've just done the vial testing, you know, that they do. So uh, I'm finding out incredible stuff, but you never know. I want to ask yeah. you about uh, when you met President Obama, right, uh, and being honored at the White House. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about that, you know, just briefly. Okay. Well, I've been involved in air separation for a long, long time. And uh, I developed a, something called an oxygen concentrator. Have you, have you heard of such a thing? Probably people in your audience have, if they've had any prop people with respiratory issues. Mm-hmm. Instead of instead of getting oxygen from a cylinder, you invented a, a an appliance that draws in room air and separates it and produces oxygen on demand. And it made several different types. One that allowed people to fly on airplanes, and and so the body of work they did. That's why I was given the the medal. Which is a total surprise to me. It's called, uh, what's it, it called? The National Medal, isn't it? Of, of what's the National Medal of Technology and Innovation? Technology and Innovation. For somebody um, like me, it's the highest you get. Yeah. Uh, um, would you consider that to be the greatest accomplishment of your career? No, I think that was, especially at the time, I didn't think too much about it. I was in depression actually at the time. But my biggest accomplishment, Mark, is that as a result of the, what I developed, invented, uh, many people were able to breathe easier, extended the life and quality of the life of literally millions of people yeah. around the world. That's so that's a big what thing. I, that is that's a big thing, yeah. Well, as, as a guy that suffers from a touch of COPD myself, 
Um, Do you? I, I can oh. appreciate it terribly, but uh, how does it relate to the COVID we're going through today? You, you know, what are you, what are your views on that? Well, COVID, it doesn't really involve oxygen. I mean, obviously we breathe it. It's the air is 70, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. And the, that huge COVID virus that's floating around is carried by means of that air. And however, the only connection that I've made, and I'm working with the university, the UNLV out here, uh, is the, the connection through filtration. Because in order to you draw the air into my appliance by way of a HEPA filter, mm-hmm. so you clean it up. And HEPA filters are, go down to 0.03 micron, which is an extremely small particle. And the uh, COVID virus is 50 microns in diameter. So it's easy to filter out. And so we're working on a a ventilated mask that uh, filters the air to a a shield that is flooded with clean air. But as far as the oxygen part of it, the the peripheral, my peripheral involvement with filters is Mm -hmm. what what helped out or pointed me in that direction. So I am working on it, um, but God, it's an insidious thing, Mark. I'm Mm -hmm. kidding. No, good luck with that. Good luck with it. We could do with it. I want to switch just for a sec before we uh, wind up a couple more questions. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, my own mother-in-law passed with Alzheimer's. I can relate to it. Do you have any words of wisdom for those, you know, uh, whose loved ones are living with Alzheimer's? Uh, Yes. The most important one is get help. You know, as a scientist, I thought that I could take care of grace i could cure her and i kept it quiet i shielded her uh, as time went by just we didn't go out anymore i I did everything virtually for my businesses and it was but i didn't ask for help i wouldn't give into it and and finally i almost i that's what put me in depression i just had i lost all hope right exhausted all means but ask for help get help uh, there are so many people out there, caregivers that are suffering. The 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 oftentimes, if not always, the actual patient isn't that much aware of what's going on. But the mm. the, the sufferer is the person suffering is the the caregiver, and uh, it's there's a lot of frankly suicide out there. People just can't handle it and give up. They see this person. Mm-hmm in front of them just disappearing before their eyes. Grace and I were together since high school and uh, to see her disappear before my eyes. It's yes. It's, it's Very still hard. That's a long years. life together. A lot of wonderful, wonderful memories. I bet. So um, the, unfortunately, Mark, the wonderful memories turn into bad memories. I can't even look at old pictures or anything. It just brings bad thoughts to my mind. So I, I have to defend against it. And so I can't really, mm-hmm. we had a wonderful life. We had a, gifted life uh, mm-hmm. but it's when something like this happens it just uh, removes all those good memories so well. i'm making new mark i make new memories how about that That's yeah the well the thing is i believe she's still with you anyway you know her body functions and all of that may have suffered alzheimer's but her spirit is there and she's 100 percent healthy look what about the writing process for a reason to be what was the the writing process for you for me, I wrote, just as a young boy, I used to send uh, short stories into uh, Saturday Evening Post and Collier's and the like. And so I always had that itch to do it, but I couldn't make any money at it. So I went, you know, what I'm really good at is uh, mathematics, science, and engineering. So that's the direction I went in. But I, it sort of flows for me. It, um, once I have a, a, once I format it, I have a plan. Then I then I start to fill in the blanks, and it 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 flows. Uh, I think you you really have to have a an interest in you know knowledge about what you're writing about. Sure, yeah. And uh, don't don't start writing about something you don't know anything about. Um, so my um, inclination was to write about my experience with Grace and try to inspire others. Um, and ask, again, ask for help. Get out of get out don't think you can do it all by yourself for six and a half years i tried it all by myself until Mm -hmm. i couldn't get out of bed anymore Uh, and went from 230 pounds down to 175 
Uh, there's um, a lot of I, people like you, you know. You're not Robinson Crusoe when it comes to suffering like that. So what uh, what do you hope? Uh, let me ask you, Norman, um, Doug, what do you hope readers will take away? Uh, from I hope, a, they'll, be in, a yeah, I hope be. they'll be inspired, Mark, that I recovered. I was about as bad as it gets. Okay, I so you recovered back. and then you thought, well, hang on, I've got to find a reason to be, to recover, basically. And, I had uh, to find a reason to get up in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> and so the, the yeah. very fascinating people should look at maybe the genealogy. Uh, you know, where did I come from? What traits mm-hmm. do I have? I mean, it's funny how people, you know, I mean, you're science, as you said, and, and engineering and... and you know, never the twain shall meet. And there's others who are who are uh, totally opposite to that in life. And uh, you know, everybody's well, everybody's uh, unique, and yet we're such a close. Uh, what is it? Six degrees of separation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, the whole bit. I, you know, I'm when I see someone, some athlete. By the way, my Buffalo Bills lost yesterday, which I'm upset about. <laughs> well, this, this is not dated. It's a podcast, so it's going to go for a long time out there. So <laughs> maybe the time yeah. to get it, you know. Um, okay. What I want to ask you now is how can people buy the book? Where is it, uh, you know, where is well, it, it uh, gotable? It's distributed every place. Amazon Amazon is the easiest place. It's on, mm-hmm. uh, It's available hardcover, ebook, and uh, audio. So Amazon is the best place to go. It's Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. It just got the bestseller status. Uh, Amazon. Really? For ba- at Barnes and Noble. The um, no, Amazon bestseller. Oh, very good. Well done. Congrats. Yeah. All right, come on. They, that you should celebrate with this. <laughs> That's well, good. It's hard for me to feel joy. Uh, that, that I think many people, uh, caregivers, real you know, understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. When you feel joy, Mark, you. Uh, guilt comes along with it you know why am i still here you know why couldn't i save her and the image of her comes back to me and the, the agony uh, mm-hmm. so it's it's hard to find joy i i have a after many years i i met a wonderful uh, uh, mature lady out here and uh, she she's a a, ma- a reason to be for me right now well, my work go. i see the work i do at unlv is a reason to be. I met many. I mentor a lot of students, engineering students, um, and that gives me a reason to get up in the morning. Um, and I didn't have that for many years. Right. Uh, I right. dreaded it, and I wouldn't share. But again, audience, share, talk about it. Yeah. It's sort of it's sort of like Alcoholics Anonymous. I guess you know people start talking, talk about how you feel, get your emotions out there. Otherwise, they spiral inward. And into a dark hole, and you, the clinical depression sets in, as it did with me. Mm-hmm. And medication doesn't work, not for me. No, Meditate. It's something you've got to go through, something you've got to live through, you know. Uh, I know. Well, med- meditation works, Mark, if you can get yourself, your mindset properly. So I try to meditate, mm-hmm. put myself somewhere else, and put aside the, the, the evil thoughts, the bad thoughts. It works. Anyway. All right. Well, listen, good luck with this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's A Reason to Be is the name of the book. It's got a beautiful tartan cover on the thing. Uh, it's written by Norman McCombs. It's his first book and already a bestseller on Amazon. How about that? And uh, I wish you luck with this. I wish you well with your life and continue on. And, you know, uh, Grace would really want you to be happy, successful, and achieving what you're doing now. Remember that. Yeah, I do my best. All right, my friend. Take care. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. Goodbye now. Goodbye.